So we're from EA Criterion, and we're here to show you the work we've done on the Battlefront X-Wing VR mission. So as you can hopefully see, we can look around, say hi to our crew unit over there, maybe uh, see what this button does. Oh, gadgets. I like toys. Oh, it's not the fashion for this. Uh, so, because we're using the auxiliary output port of the uh, PSVR, unfortunately what you're seeing on the screen is slightly lower resolution than what I'm seeing in the headset, but hopefully it'll still hold up okay. We'll be switching between this mode and another mode during presentations, so should, we can show you a bit more debug information. Yeah, but before we go into that mode, uh, let's talk about the biggest battle that we had in this game, which was performance. Uh, so, we had to maintain 60 frames per second all the time, so that when PS4 reprojects that to 120 hertz. Uh, the prediction that we are using is correct, and that way we can reduce motion sickness. So we had to implement some optimizations in Frostbite uh, in order to achieve this. Uh, if we go into separate mode, uh, hopefully you can notice the first one. So we, uh, the pixels around the corners are missing, and that's because when we apply the distortion to show this image on the lens of the headset, those pixels are going to be lost. So first thing we did is not waste resources processing them. Um, another thing that happens due to this distortion is that the pixels around the center area of your vision get magnified and what that means to us is that we have to render at a much higher resolution. So we're rendering at 1.4 times the native resolution of the headset. The native resolution is 1080p. And we're also using temporal anti anti-aliasing. And the reason we're using temporal anti-aliasing and um, we're not using other kind of anti-aliasing anti like MSAA is that unlike MSAA that only removes aliasing coming from geometry, uh, temporal anti-aliasing also removes the aliasing coming from shaders, so texture noise and specular aliasing, uh, which is really important for us as we are using a PBR, a PBR model. So if we come uh -oh. back to our <laughs> past, <laughs> there we are. Sorry, guys. There we are. And now we face the sign and pause there. So if we disable temporal anti-aliasing and Chris uh, looks around, hopefully you can notice uh, the AES coming from the specular. If you were wearing the headset, you would also see like uh, AES coming from geometry and texture, but hopefully you can notice. Let's re-enable it. There you are, nice and smooth. Uh, so TA was a massive improvement for us in terms of visual quality. Another thing worth mentioning is probably uh, shadows. Uh, so shadows are really important in VR. Uh, we're using a traditional cascade system, but we're using one slice just for the cockpit, so that we really reduce shadow of okay? And we are sure that for the rest we have a draw distance long enough to cover the entire asteroid field. So another decision we had to make was whether we use the third or forward shading, and we found in this case that absolute four plus gave us the best performance of the number of lights we're after. Um, so if you can see when Chris fires his lasers, um, it's affecting the cockpit and the nearby scenery, but also many of the VFX and other ships have light attacks, so we can have uh, end up with a lot of light sources in our scene. Um, now Frostbite has a lot of cool features in this area, such as area lights and reflections. But unfortunately, we don't have performance available to actually make use of them. So instead, we're having to pull back fairly basic options like point lights and cube maps. Also, because we're using Forward Plus, the cost is now in every pixel that we render. So um, to kind of ameliorate that, we use uh, a preset pack to ensure we reject as many pixels as possible. Another Frostbite feature that we rely on heavily is dynamic resolution scaling. So as the complexity of the scene increases and the load of the GPU goes up, we can drop the resolution of the render targets that we use, meaning that we process fewer pixels. Um, so if I just bring up this graph here, the yellow line you can see on the graph shows the current resolution scale uh, as it varies, 1.4 at the top and 1.0 at the bottom. And it's got the resolution of the top right-hand corner, although, yeah, bonus points you can spot what's wrong with it. Um, <clears throat> what you can see here with the dips is where the GPU would have framed out but instead of that, we drop the resolution. Um, if we didn't do that, the uh, player would start to feel uncomfortable and be really horrible. Um, this proved to be a really key technique for us. So in VR, sorry, I got a bit lost there, but it's kind of fun. Uh, so in VR, heavy shaders and expensive lighting usually has to be rendered twice, so you quickly increase your rendering cost. Uh, this is why I put most of our details, uh, more details than usual actually, in the textures and geometry. It's uh, into the geometry and textures instead, which is relatively simple to process from VR. 
Uh, this allowed us to get a much higher quality out of it than we would ex initially expect considering the limitations. So these things that we've mentioned today, plus some other optimizations, meant that we managed to get the X-Wing VR mission to a fairly steady 60 frames a second, and hopefully managed to keep the visuals at a decent quality. Um, hope you've enjoyed the presentation. This is a, it's a free DLC for Battlefront, so if you get the chance, please give it a go, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening.